damage that that finishes. Just waiting, just waiting. What's the white dot? I think we're there. Are we there, Andrew? Are we Good there? Morning. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Is anybody there? Not yet, but they will be very shortly. Just wait. They'll all start coming on every moment. Oh, just Hello, Ruby wait a bit. Is anybody there? Hello, Ruby. Hello. Okay. Well, um, assuming that people do join us very shortly. Oh look. We're up to six already. Oh, that's good. There are people there. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Beeson Vicarage once more for the um, uh, Sunday worship Same with Sunday Andrew and Lindsay evening. from the Vicarage. Good morning, Bex, Audrey, and uh, whoever else is there. Do do let us know you're there because um, unlike in church, we can actually see the messages even if we can't always respond to them um, in the thing. Oh, and Michelle, that's lovely. And good morning, everyone. Oh, look, they're, look, they're all joining in now. Um, I bet that's going to be Carol. Yeah, that's Carol. There we go. Lovely. Okay. Lovely to see you all. 16 are up to. Goodness me. Oh, six <laughs> see how we go. So, welcome to the vicarage. Um, Andrew's poised here. Go for it. Go for it. Light a very pretty candle. I do have to hold it over a bit. So, welcome. Here we are. 17th of January. Deja vu. Yeah. We never could have believed that when we started doing this, which was... March. End of March, or Easter time last year. Yeah. Um, we never could have believed that we would be back, still here, or back here in the vicarage, and um, that our churches wouldn't be able to be open again. We never thought we'd be here, did we? We thought we'd be back to normal by then. Goodness me. Here's some joy though. Um, there is a yeah. thaw going on and I've been watching yes. our back garden and the blackbirds are going mad. Um, they can see the grass, they can get at the grass and they've been, males and females, they've been turning leaves over, picking up grubs and all sorts and uh, just a moment ago I counted 15 of them and that wasn't an exhaustive count. And they, the, you know, the females were chasing the males more than the males chasing the females. I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> Um, and blue tits on the bird table going for seeds and sort of fat pallets we put on the bird table. So that, that's nice, you know. So clearly they're making the most of the thaw. So rejoice in the creation that's out there. And uh, probably after this, you, maybe we will go for a walk. It's um, that's morning. It's only, according to our somewhat thermometer on the back wall in the back garden, which faces north, it's four degrees right now. But um, mm. it feels like about one mm. uh, because of the breeze. But the sun's yeah. out, so it's probably going to be a bit warmer. The thaw in, uh, will in increase, continue, so enjoy enjoy the day and uh, enjoy a yeah. bit of worship with us both here today. Yeah, we're looking out of um, the vicarage window onto to Beeson Road and you can see that the uh, the snow in the front garden, a lot of that has gone now, hasn't it? But, it will st but where it's been compacted from people walking on it on the pass, it will still be quite icy, I think, and quite slippery. Yeah, and there's still so, people yeah. walking in the road. I, yeah, I, when I went out yesterday, we, I managed to get, and others, managed to get um, the letter out to quite a few people who, who don't have email, um, but not everybody. So um, I'll be continuing that today and hopefully dropping off a few for other people to deliver as well. So, um, yeah, sorry if you didn't get yours yesterday and you were expecting it, but we will get it out to you. And one of the things that I delivered to people was um, a little service sheet like, like this, which is the order of service that we use um, for this service. If you'd like a copy of that, I can email it and you haven't got it. We can email it out to you. We might be able to deliver some if you're near, near if you're in one of our parishes. So do let us know and we'll do our best to get that out to you. And then you can join in more of the words. Um, if you're familiar with coming to church, you'll recognise some of the prayers and things anyway. If you're not, then um, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll try and um, help you to uh, as far as we can. But you're very welcome. Wherever you are this day, whatever the weather is like, whatever's happening in your life, you are very welcome. But before us, we go any further, I do just need to let you know if you haven't heard already some really sad news that we had yesterday. I say sad, it's a mixture of feelings, but um, a very loved member of our church, um, Jack Worsnop, died on um, Friday night, Saturday morning. 
and Jack, he was 93. Um, he's had a really good, really long life. He's been um, well loved um, by everybody, um, a real character. And in normal times, we'd be saying it's very sad because we shall miss him greatly. Um, but we recognise that he's had a good life and that it's not been easy the last um, year or so for him. And even a bit beyond that, really, he has been getting more frail and struggling a bit. And now we know, you know, he's always been part of the church. He's been a person of faith. His faith was always important to him. Um, he used to sing in the choir here at St Mary's and we'd be saying, we recognise, um, yeah, he's gone to a better place. Um, and, and God will take care of him. The difficulty with this time and the difficulty in time is that he leaves behind Margaret. And so our sympathy and love are with Margaret at this time, his wife. Of, yeah, they met when she was 20 and she's 93 as well. They've been together 73 years. And Jack, um, when we talked about you know, how long they've been married, he said, it's more than a life sentence. And they both laugh because <laughs> we knew he was joking because um, yeah, he'd have been lost without Margaret. So um, we're very sad to say goodbye to Jack and sad that we can't meet to say goodbye to him as we would do normally. Mm -hmm. And we can't get together with Margaret. And that's one of the real sadnesses of this present time, that we can't come together to support each other through difficult times as well as celebrate the good ones. So um, I did go to see Margaret yesterday and she knows that everybody uh, is sending their love and sympathy. Um, so uh, I'm sure cards will be welcomed if you're able to send a card. Um, even that's not easy at this time, but <sighs> bye bye Jack, we shall miss you. Safe in God's care. Can I briefly mention from my mm. church lady mm. called Jean Yeoman, who mm. was a mere 90. Uh, she was 90 last October, mm. um, but since she's had cancer and since uh, before October, she's been struggling, but keeping a brave face. And sadly, she went downhill very quickly after her birthday. In a long story short, she died on the 23rd of December. But can you believe because of Christmas and because of the delay caused by COVID, mm. her funeral is not till the 29th of this month. So it's still best part of a fortnight away. So from the venerable being on to remember uh, Trevor and Wendy and Julie, mm. who are Jean's family, respectively in Leeds, Winchester and Barnsley. Uh, and of course they can't gather for the funeral in the way they would like to at the end of the month. And this is happening to so many people. Um, so there's this double loss of the loss of the loved one, but also not being able to pay our last respects as we'd like to. Yeah. So we're all living with this double loss and uh, we'll be thinking about this in the prayers later. Also remember, um, uh, one of the members of um, somebody, part of St Mary's, whose granddaughter, uh, baby, died in a cot death mm. um, yesterday. So the other age, end of the age spectrum. All these things are really hard, aren't they? Mm. Um, yeah. Mm. But we are here today to worship, so worship we will, and we will look forward to better times. So uh, if you have the sheet, we'll begin with the greeting and the first prayer. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Almighty God, God to, to whom all hearts, hearts are opened. opened all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, uh, We are going to try and see if it's possible to sing on here because it did work from home before, didn't it? But we're not sure if it's going to work with the mic. The microphone didn't seem to be working so well when we were in church. So, um, 
So we'll, we'll see how we do on that. Um, but before we do that, let's come to our prayer, our time of confession. Now, this is a time when we reflect on the past week and see what's gone well, what's not gone not so well. And the great thing about the Christian faith is that we get that chance to have a fresh start every week and to put behind us all the things which haven't gone well and to try again with God's grace. So, the grace of God has dawned upon the world through our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who sacrificed himself to purify a people for his own. Let us confess our sins. So a moment of reflection on the past week. And then our responses. Your righteousness, Lord, is like the strong mountains and your judgments are like the great deep. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. With you is the well of life and in your light shall we see light. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Save us, Lord. Continue your steadfast love to those who love you and your salvation to the upright of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive us our sins and make us holy to serve him in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, this is the time we're going to try and see if the singing works. So we're going to try the Peruvian Gloria, which Andrew will lead and I'll do the response. So basically, I'm going to repeat everything that Andrew sings or try to. Shall I shut up when you sing? Um, no, if you if you do the response as well and then we'll see. But what we really need from you is to tell us if it um, sounds OK. That is, if it sounds distorted, um, we're going to have to go back to Sean and, and get his technical expertise to make sound for singing work on the computer. But if, it's, um, if it works, then uh, we'll see how we do. So, we'll go at a bit of a lick. Do. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Father. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Father. out with that but you know you try these things we see if it works and um thankfully we do have sean who can help us out so um okay we won't sing again this morning um which is a shame because we had a beautiful hymn that we could have sung we could have sung brightest and best for the sons of the sorry okay in that case let's move on to the collet the special prayer for this week and our Bible readings. So today is the second Sunday of Epiphany. Let us pray. Almighty God, in Christ you make all things new. 
transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace and in the renewal of our lives make known your heavenly glory through jesus christ your son our lord who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the holy spirit one god now and forever amen, amen. Well, the reading set today, we have, first of all, a beautiful story about um, Samuel. And I'm, I'm going to tell this story. And then, Andrew, if you could then read the Gospel. It's not that long. I think we can do that. You yeah. can put it up to brackets. Okay. Um, so, not hmm? Oh, yeah. One second. Okay. So, um, I'm just going to read the first part of the story. Well, I'm going to tell the story of Samuel. So, um it starts, it's from 1 Samuel, chapter 3, verses 1, 1 to 10 is what we're reading. And it's about a little boy called Samuel. Now, you make the back story of this is really important. Hannah, this is, this is way back in the Old Testament, so it's a long time ago. Hannah um, was a, a very troubled soul because she longed to have a child and she and her husband didn't have any children. And she was getting on a bit. And um, so she came to the temple um, distraught, prayer in, in tears, and um, Eli, the priest, when he saw it, first of all, thought she was, I don't know, drunk or disturbed or whatever, but then he, he gave her some time, listened to her, and heard how sad she was, and he said to her, this time, next year, you will have a son, and, uh, and it happened, amazingly, um, she had the little boy called Samuel, and she dedicated Samuel to God. And when he was still young, um, she brought him to the temple so that he could be looked after by uh, Eli and brought up um, within that temple tradition. And I guess would have got an edu education through that. So she was thinking about his future. So Samuel was uh, ministering to the Lord under Eli. And it says the word of the Lord was very rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, Here I am. And ran to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. But Eli said, I didn't call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I didn't call you, my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there. Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak for your servant is listening. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I just love that story. It's just beautiful, isn't it? I, I heard in that a story that Venerable Bede, because I've recently read about Venerable Bede in a, a book called A History of the Bible, and he died on Ascension Day wow. in AD 735, and he just finished a translation of St John's Gospel, which was quite an authoritative work at the time. The point is that B was dedicated to God by his parents who sent him to Jarrow, where he was a monk all mm. his life, 
to be a, a monk, but he would have been sent when he was probably about five or six. So wow. They weren't daft because they realised that he went to this school with all those monks with their books from all over Europe, particularly books from Rome. Mm. He would have got a very good education. And I, I think he probably would have uh, written uh, Latin and read Latin, probably mm -hmm. had said Latin psalms in his sleep. Um, but it's just interesting the idea of somebody being dedicated to God's service at a tender age. And here's a thought that brings Bede up to date. Uh, a plague struck them, uh, the area in Jaro uh, in Bede's youth, well, in his childhood. And he records in his writings that he and one other monk uh, said the office, said the, the, the worship every day in the monastery because almost all the other monks and novices died. Mm -hmm. And that was happening when he was a young child. And there's a sort of parallel with our time today, with uh, the coronavirus. Mm. Wow. Anyway, just uh, just I heard them read in that story. And you should have said at the beginning um, that uh, we welcome people from both parishes here today, because although this is going live on the St Mary's Facebook page, it will be shared, I hope, by Carol to the um, Bead Facebook page. Yeah. So that um, yeah, welcome to both churches. Thank yeah. You. Good. So I shall press on with the Gospel. I think you better, yeah. So the Gospel is from the beginning of John's Gospel. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to Jesus, you, O Lord. Lord. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathaniel and said to him, We have found him about him Moses in the law. And also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph, from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? <laughs> Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you come to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You'll see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you o, o Christ. Christ. So, Andrew, what, what leaps out to you from this reading? Well, it's amazing, isn't it, that Jesus sort of said these things to Nathaniel and he responded in this extraordinary way. He says, you're the Messiah, you're the Son of God. Um, incredible reaction um, from Jesus just telling him, well, I saw you under the fig tree. Um, mm. I'm not sure what to make of it, really. Do you know that? I, I wonder what was going, what, what Nathaniel had been thinking about when he was sat under the fig tree. You know, I sort of wonder if he'd been reading you know, the, the, the scriptures, the, the prophets, and, and thinking about the Messiah. So that, again, there's always a story that goes on before. Was well, it like that statue, the thing Joe, is like that? <laughs> <laughs> Deep in thought, Jesus, ah, that's uh, a special chap. But I'm looking at our fig tree just outside the window here. There's no leaves on it at the moment. You're not going to get much shade there, really, are you? But um, I get. I mean, both these stories are about calling, aren't they? About calling and about discernment, which is a, a big word, isn't it? But sort of almost thinking behind the thoughts or mm. seeing behind what there is to see, sort of seeing things that are not yet visible or not obvious. Mm. And Jesus was the master of that mm. and is the master of that. Mm. And it's always, it's, it's thinking about what's gone on before in their lives to bring them to this point. And then I guess also about how they go forward from there as well. And I'm thinking that that's true for all of us as well, really, isn't it? That um, at some point in our lives, or maybe at various points in our lives, um, in our Christian journeys, if you like, um, then... There are those moments where things become a little bit more real for us. Well, there's a parallel, isn't there, with the story of Samuel, with mm. um, this poor young lad having 
hearing these voices in the night three times mm -hmm. over, not knowing what was going on. And yeah. it took Eli, the man of God, quite a while to work out what the young lad was saying or what was mm -hmm. behind what the young lad was saying. And he, you know, it's like we tell jokes, don't we? And everything happens in threes, and the third time you get the punchline. And here we've got it in the Samuel story. Mm. And Eli get, getting the punch light third time round, the penny dropped, eureka moment, and um, and and then Samuel asks asks the voice to to identify itself, and uh, and um, he realizes he's talking with God. Mm. So I guess I've got a question for all of us today. So to think about think about your call, think about when those moments when it all became a bit more real to you um, and if you've not had that moment yet maybe because you're here now maybe this is the moment when it becomes a bit more real to you and you realize that the call isn't just to everybody but actually God's calling you you and he's wanting you to speak to him to have a relationship with him and to be part of his church and to whatever role he's calling you to within his church i guess both samuel and nathaniel have parts to play in the bible story and that story goes on beyond the bible so it's about you playing your part in the bible story Sometimes I want to paraphrase mm. a bit of Isaiah chapter 6 where mm. Isaiah says, there's a voice which says, you know, whom shall we send? And the prophet says, here am I, send me. And sometimes I want to paraphrase that or turn it around and say, here my Lord, send somebody else. <laughs> and and on, on our churches we, we can say, oh, we ought to have more of this, we ought to have more of that. But it's always somebody else who should do this. But it's the person who suggests it may actually be an answer to their own prayer. And on, on the matter of prayer, because of COVID, there's so much we're uh, disabled by, or there's so much we can't do and, and would like to do. Mm. But one thing we can all do is pray. Mm. Um, and it's uh, the simplest prayer are the arrow prayers, just sending a prayer straight to Lord, help me with this, Lord, or help, help so-and-so to get better, or help their NHS to do a better job, or to help them to be cope. appreciated, help mm. them to cope. Um, mm. They're overwhelmed, aren't they? But, you know, consider them all these situations in your prayers. Mm. This is something all of us can do more of. And uh, be like Bede, mm. be monks in our own time and nuns offering prayers mm. for the world and its needs. You know, Andrew, I think that's just the moment then to move to our prayers this morning. Yeah, it is now. Yes. Be the answer to my own prayer then, shall yeah. we? Yeah. Lead, lead our prayers this morning. Mm. We'll just preface it by saying, um, all of some of you out there, you'll have some prayers that you want me to say but you can offer them to and they're equally valid and it doesn't matter if you say them aloud or say them silently i believe god hears your prayer mm. and all of us will inevitably be praying about people affected by coronavirus but like i mentioned about jean yeoman a member of my church earlier who died she had cancer mm -hmm. another member of my uh, church brenda buckle her husband arthur has died in the past week a bit like jack worse not from st mary's he was in his 90s mm. um, and he didn't have COVID. So, you know, there are people affected by things other than, other than coronavirus. In fact, they're the majority. And as we've heard from Lindsay, you know, one family's lost a child, a baby, a cot death. So in both ends of life, um, people are, are dying, people are suffering. And you will know someone or some people. So hold them in this time of prayer. And when we come to that moment, I'll offer some silence and you can name them out loud if you want to in your home or simply name them in the silence of your hearts. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, you promised that when two or three are gathered in your name, that you're there in the midst of them. So we thank you, Lord, for your presence with, with us now. We pray to you, God, through the name of Jesus and by your spirit. Lord, help us in this difficult time 
affecting so many nations of the world in different ways and different stages and forms of lockdown. Help us in our troubled lives. Help us to see good and to see hope. Also to see joy. I bless you particularly, Lord, for the blackbirds and the blue ticks I've seen this morning. And I thank you for the sunshine that we have on yesterday's nice weather after the gloom of the greyness and the snow of late. So I pray a lifting of a veil, a lifting of darkness from many people's lives around the world and in our parish. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah, our prayer. Let's hold in our prayers and thoughts the leaders of the world, particularly for the United States of America, as we go into the week in which Joe Biden will be inaugurated as the next president. Remember our outgoing Donald Trump and the difficulties he's got himself in. Pray for the people of that country that they may allow this inauguration to pass peaceably. Mm. Pray for governments around the world as they deal with the pandemic in their different ways. Pray that they may learn from each other. That some nations are dealing with this better than others. Help us to have the humility to learn from the good examples that are around us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. In a moment, we'll pray for those who we want to name in our hearts for healing. But let's pray for the healers, mm. especially in this country, for the National Health Service. A whole body of people, over a million people, dedicated to bringing healing and wholeness to many, many people. Lord, we know from our news the difficulties there under the extreme pressures for the lack of or not the right personal protective equipment for PPE. Many, some of them have lost their own lives trying to bring help to others. So I pray for all engaged in helping those with coronavirus and other diseases and troubles. Remember all the different clinics and special centres set up to vaccinate people. Give thanks for people we know who have been vaccinated and those who are still waiting. So we dedicate to you, Lord, the National Health Service and all those who care for those for whom we pray. Bless the healers. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. So, as I said earlier, you'll know people who need healing in all sorts of difficulty, and also their carers who watch with them. So just hold in a moment's silence and name in your hearts or in out loud in your own home those whom you want to see heal, healing come to. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And we've also mentioned um, Jack Worsnop and Jean Yeoman, Arthur Buckle, and this young baby. And there are others who have died recently. And maybe some of us are remembering loved ones who died around this time in years gone by. So let's just hold those those who died in a moment's silence. And also all those who grieve. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. So rejoicing in the fellowship of St Mary, of the Venerable Bede and all the saints, we commend ourselves and all people to your unfailing love, merciful Father, accept, accept these prayers. prayers. For the, the sake, sake of your, your son, 
our Saviour, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, now we come to the, the peace. So um, you can stay sat. We'll, we'll stay sat as well. But if we stand up, you won't see us. Um, Always. Yeah. Christ is our peace. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, everything has become new. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's offer one another a sign of peace. <laughs> peace be with you all. Peace with you all. So we have, oh look, people are wishing each other peace and everyone peace. That's lovely. So we have the bread and the wine. Blessed be God, by whose grace creation is renewed, by whose love heaven is open, by whose mercy we offer our sacrifice of praise. Amen. Amen. The Lord is here. The Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you have created the heavens and the earth and formed us in your own image. In the fullness of time, you sent forth your Son, your eternal word, who laid down his life for our salvation and rose from the grave, the first fruits of your new creation. You send forth your holy and life-giving spirit to give life to our mortal bodies and to renew the face of the earth. Therefore, with all the heavenly hosts, we give voice to everything that you have made and sing the eternal hymn of praise. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God, God of power and, and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness, granted by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ will, will come, come again. again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we in the company of all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. <coughs> Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Andrew, the body of Christ. Amen. Lindsay, the body of Christ. Amen. blood of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen. Mm. Let's pray. God of glory, you nourish us with your word, who is the bread of life. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, that through us the light of glory may shine in all the world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we pray together. Almighty God, God we, we thank, thank you for, for feeding us. us with the body and blood of our your, your Son, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Our blessing today. Christ, the Son of God, perfecting you the image of his glory and gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and with you throughout this coming week. Remain with you always. Amen. Amen. This is the point at which we'd sing. So do go away and sing to yourselves, whatever you want to. Um, if we can get the... Uh, music sorted with Sean's help for next week we'll, we'll try and do that and uh, we'd like your selection uh, suggestions for hymns I've already had a few thank you very much and um, today we would have sung brightest and best of the sons of the morning which is so beautiful isn't it? It's hardly appropriate because we're getting dazzled by the we bright, are, yeah. bright sun here and uh, I've been reflecting um, uh, on and off that Lindsay's been in light for most of this service and I've been in darkness <laughs> but it's because the sun's behind a sycamore tree up there and um, well mm. it, of course it's the earth that's moved not the sun yeah. and um, now we get, we're both getting dazzled and it, it's the uh, the bars of the window the window frame that's yes. sort of, uh, in the way and I can just see how filthy those windows are as well. <laughs> yes. I mean, it's me <laughs> never mind so um, it's just shining straight in us now which is lovely um, but we just have to adjust where we sit do you want to lean if you, it's because you're a bit higher as well, Andrew, isn't it? There you go, that's Andrew. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So, whatever you do this week and wherever you are, God keep you safe. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen. <laughs> so, amen. Take care, everybody. Keep and well, God bless. Keep, safe. keep well, keep safe. And hopefully, yeah, see you sometime soon. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye, folks. Bye.